Hello everyone and welcome to the Two Having to Roll podcast. My name is Oliver. Today, Robin and I spoke to Kelly. Kelly was kind enough to come on and talk to us about her LARP experience, uh, specifically her experience using prosthetics. She is a player in the Imperial Orcs in the Empire LARP system, so she taught us a lot about the culture around the Imperial Orcs. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, uh, click subscribe. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, give us a nice review, that helps us out and we appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the conversation. So Kelly, well, this is always a good a good start. How long have you been laughing for? Oh, Jesus, that's a long time. I've been laughing <laughs> since I was uh, 16 years old. Okay, yeah. So, uh, good to... Was that at, like, uni or... Was that at, like, uni or... Um, I was going, yeah, I was going to university at the mm-hmm. time and a friend of mine, um, we played D&D. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, first, before that, we were playing Warhammer, you know, the little models. So, yes. yeah, we played Warhammer. Oh, yes. Yeah, and then we were like D and D. We found out about D and D, so we were playing D and D. And then some. This was like when we were small, small kids. Yeah. And um, and then someone was like, "I found where you can actually dress up like your characters. This nice. is amazing." So uh-huh. um, three of them went off and did that. We didn't. They, it was after the fact that they told us. They come back and went. Uh, we went to a lot. It was Laurie and Trust. All right. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So they went to. So the following year, we all went. And then I'm 16 years old at the time, so this was a good long, long, long time ago. Uh-huh, yeah. Over 20 years. I've been laughing for almost, well, in between 25 to 30 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. that's, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. A long time, a yeah, long time. We, yeah, because we're just discovering about, like, Laurie and Trust, and Laurie and Trust is a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a unicorn in the fact that it's been going a long time. Because I thought a lot of these LARP systems have been going as long, but it turns out that Laurie and has been going like forever in LARP terms. I think you could probably consider Laurie and Trust the OG. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> it has not aged well. No, no. No. Is it a bit of a relic of like what it used to be as in like it's just a bit all over the place or something? Um, It's not very inclusive from what I've heard. Oh, really? So okay. I don't go anymore. No. I don't go anymore. And some of the kit standards, and I'm not... A, um. I'm not well. I, I am very, very good with my own kit. I'm very, yeah. very, very particular. Yeah. But I'm accepting with other people that that not can't necessarily have really high. St- I've been doing it for so long now. I've got a, literally a whole garage full of LARP kit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> shelves, the shelves, the shelves of it. So, um, but when you just see people running around in jeans and trainers and a black shirt with with a tie, and then they're, and then they're like, "That's my LARP kit." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's allowed there. The so, immersion breaking, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And people do break character a lot there. Well, yeah. So, um, but when we first started, for a sixteen-year-old going to LT that long ago, for me, it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> like the very first character I played an elf that had wings. No. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I made. I'm so proud of her at the time, but they were so shy now when I think back on them. <laughs> I made these wings that had strings, and if I pulled the strings, they kind of opened. Oh, that's, that's cool, though. That <laughs> it is sounds cool. awesome, but it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dick, but it you were 16, it's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Instead of wings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it was just, like, torn up fabric as, as the feathers and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. But I only played her for a year, and mm-hmm. then... Um, and I made a cat character because um, there were, Beastkin wasn't around at LT at the time. So I made a cat character mm-hmm. and uh, I was a burglar. So I was a cat burglar. Okay. So, <laughs> so is that, so have you always been, because yeah, you, you, you play in the Imperial Orcs at Empire. Mm-hmm. Have you always been, is, is that where it started you being drawn to the, like the prosthetic side of it? Was that always a thing? Or... Yeah, I, I must hate myself. Yeah. Because I, I always say, all right, one day my next character is just going to be a plain human. And then I go to a new LARP and, and I've got bells and whistles hanging off me mm-hmm. and loads of stuff hanging. I literally just went to a LARP a couple of weeks ago where um, I played a Vedan. Okay, okay. From cool. D&D. It's a new race oh, in right, D&D. All right. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And I played a Vedan. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it was a one shot LARP and like, Perfect opportunity for me to just play a standard human, but no, nah. I want to play a Vedan. Green skin, green wig, big ears, everything. Yeah, of course, yeah. that's just me all over. So yeah, my yeah, first character. Like. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I was a cat. I had a whole headpiece that I wore that just the only part of my face that was showing was that. The rest of it was a big headpiece and ears. Mm -hmm. um, and I had like paws that I put on and a towel that I wore and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, that's the thing with prosthetics because like we we came like we came in via like cosplay. So I I get the whole like oh I want to look a certain way, but a lot of the time when you're cosplaying you are like at a convention and you put it on you're like oh i look this this way but you are like in living hell because it's so <laughs> uncomfortable and you're just like oh cool i'll go out for an hour and then i'll go back to the hotel room so i have big respect for people that do the prosthetics in the larping because you have to be comfortable enough to yeah. or, or put up with the discomfort i'm assuming sometimes uh, to play yeah, it's a bit of both because I've been doing it for so long now. I've got to learn a lot of tricks and habits to help with making it more comfortable. For instance, mm. um, my orc, and I also play a goblin at CP now, which nice. is another full-on uh, headpiece. Yes. My orc, I put a tissue under my nose there, which really helps collect condensation right. and snot build up and stuff like that. <laughs> nice. And uh, my goblin one, she's got like a pointed nose, so there's a whole tampon stuff down that one. Whoa, yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's tricks of the trade. I think that's yeah. why we steered away from um, that that type of thing when we came into Empire, because we, we're, we're like changelings, but we didn't go all out because I think we had a bit of experience with like cosplay and being like, no, no, we, if yeah. we're going to want to try and be a little bit comfortable as well <laughs> walking around. So what do you, what do you, do you wear any prosthetics or you're just humans? Yeah, no, no. We're, so we're both changelings in Empire. Uh, Robin, why don't you, because uh, you, yours is a little bit more fancy than mine because I've just got, I've just got the ears. Yeah, I've got, um, so I've got the, the antlers. So I've got those onto a crown, which um, I've put wire through them. So they're like molded and casted. And I, I stitch those into my hair. So I braid it and stitch them in. Um, yeah, <laughs> there they are. <laughs> there we go. And then I put the, um, the, the, the elf ears on. And then I've got some silicon for, for making them a bit more flush. But that's it. <laughs> Still yeah. tricks in a trade though attaching it all to the a hairband is what i've seen other changelings doing stuff like that yeah because you're constantly like yeah so this is one question i want to ask is even just being yeah uh, i find it frustrating just getting chain mail over my little ear tips um and i know robin struggles sometimes going through like guy ropes like what is it, it do you get a sixth sense for especially if you play so many characters <laughs> like that do you get a sixth sense of awareness <laughs> yeah well we you, you have no peripheral vision when you're in a mask because it comes like right to around to there so in, in all the masks i've got several orc masks as well and um two goblin ones and in all of them no peripheral vision so you do get used to the fact that you you can't see and your whole body movement changes when you're wearing your mask and um, i've had people comment about it on me and i don't even notice i'm doing it just because i'm so used to doing it now but when you're looking you turn your whole body yes like that yeah oh. yeah i was about to ask you because i was i was thinking when you were saying that no peripheral vision is it, it because there's something orc and goblin like about turn your whole body and mm. do you think it's just because everybody who's ever played an orc in a movie or in a larp has to move that way and that's yeah. why it's become the yeah. movement of an orc <laughs> yeah for sure because um also you have your, your neck covered you know we wear wraps uh -huh. it's um it's partly uh, it's an oc reason which they've come they've made an in character reason which is yeah. you know from the shackles which is an in character reason to help the um where your mask integrates into your kit yeah. and the same yeah. for your wrists it's clever you know you know to wear so if your um, arm doesn't show where you've got no uh, face paint so you don't have to wear face paint all over your skin and stuff like that yeah. and it makes it quite tight around here so it does make it hard to just turn your head anyway <laughs> so because you've got all this stuff uh -huh. just there yeah. so yeah you just turn your whole body and and also when you're trying to listen to people you start going like that putting sorry i'll just smack that putting your <laughs> ear towards them because <laughs> And I've just got this thing where I say, I know my ears are really big, but it's actually really hard to hear with these massive ears because obviously our masks have got huge ears on them, yeah, but yeah. it's covering our real ears. But it kind so of adds to that mannerisms though, doesn't it? Because it like yeah. then it makes because then if every orc player is kind of doing this every time yeah. they're listening, it, it adds to the fact that oh, that's that's just an an orc mannerism. So we get told uh, we're quite otherworldly with the way that we move, and it makes us look quite alien to, to, to the humans because of the way we move, yeah. which is all a result of 
everything that we're wearing. Yeah. So, so the, obviously we're talking about like the Empire Orcs. When did you switch over to um, Empire then? Um, I've been playing Flax now for six years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, I was a Verushkin for one oh. year. Oh okay. Oh, so you went. So you went from you went from human to so you didn't yes. go. You didn't go straight in for the. Uh, for <laughs> and the it, happened, it happened within the space of like a few weeks. I spent three events as a Verushkin. Uh huh. And um, for the first event, I was just getting used to everything. Mm -hmm. And then the second event, I started making friends with some orcs. The third event, I just spent the whole time hanging around with the orcs as a Verushkin. Um, and then I went. I got over from that event, and I just went. I want to be an orc. So I ordered a mask, nice. I made a really basic war skirt and loads of stuff, and then the next event I was an orc. So in the space of like four weeks, I got my orc kit together and I rocked up as, as flax. I wasn't an iron tide at the time, so uh -huh. I was red hand flax and I rocked yeah. up as red hand flax. Oh, so awesome. it was just that quick. And um, most people are like, oh, you know, you're not going to be able to handle the mask, you're not going to be able to keep it up and stuff like that. But I just like... Obviously, I've had experience of, of prosthetics and stuff like that. And, yeah. But mm -hmm. no one at Empire knew me. So all the people at Empire were new people. And people have just got this habit of when they meet new people, they assume that you're new. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I've yeah. been LARPing for almost longer than anyone else in the Orc camp at the time. Yeah. But they just assumed I was new because they'd never seen me before. Never seen you. Yeah. Yeah. So and um and they were like, Oh, your kit's really good, you've done this really well and stuff like that, and trying to give me tips. And I'm like, Thanks, Lena. I didn't, ask, <laughs> I didn't ask for tips, but okay, it's thanks. And I know this is pretty basic because I've only done it within a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I knew that I needed to work on it still. And I did have plans to make it better. Although saying that, you know, when everyone says, um, what is the tip you wish you were given before you join blah, blah, blah nation? Uh -huh. Yeah. My tip for anyone joining the Imperial Orcs is do not think you need to rock up to your very first event with loads of tat hanging off of your kit oh really okay yeah because the amount of stuff you get given in play oh, in really? the game yeah from other yeah. people that you make connections with because they know the orcs and the item of worth and our heritage and stuff like that they love giving orcs gifts and so I made my kit and I attached loads of stuff to it. And then I started getting given yeah, loads of stuff. stuff. In yeah. And now I'm just so heavy with all the things that I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, just, just come in a basic. So I, so, cause we've talked about doing like maybe doing a video about um, doing like a basic kit for each nation and then yeah. maybe doing like a, uh, like a price point on it. But then the, the one that sticks out is the Imperial Orcs because You've got the the cost of the mask, but it, what what is what is like the barrier to entry? Is it is it quite high? Because it sounds like if that is the case, you could just come in very basic kit and just spend most of your budget on a half decent mask. Um, I don't think it's that expensive to for an orc. Uh, the mask is the most expensive thing you should mm. be spending your money on. Yeah. Everything else, the good thing about the orc kit is it looks tatty and handmade. Yeah. yeah. So, and most of us, it is tatty and handmade. I made my own war skirt. I bought the belt, but everything on the belt, I did myself. So anything like scraps of leather, that is really cheap. Or if you find a sofa that's going to waste, just rip up all the leather off it and literally attach it in rips to your kit and stuff like that. Yeah. The only bit of soft kit I have, which is well-made, is my shirt and my trousers everything else is made to look rough and handmade my um all of the iron tide we wear um waistcoats um which are made for us uh -huh. um but even they are made out of scraps of leather which literally just get scraps of leather and you just sew them together so none of us have got like they don't look the same all of us our, our waistcoats are all individual looking uh -huh. so yeah and so because of that it's actually quite cheap to make the kit yeah yeah, but at the same time, I, I just in my opinion, like it's it's probably got like one of the best looks and feels in the entire game. The camp and the overall aesthetic of the Imperial Orcs is just one of the best. <laughs> it it, really I am is. quite proud of our camp and the way it looks. Oh, it's um, it's it's unbelievable, and it's the the thing is as well. So, all right, okay, so yeah, what, what, no, I'm jumping in, but I do have this question. You might you might you might give me an answer or not. Right, so what is the deal with the coming into the Imperial Orcs ca Orc camps and going, not going alone or going armed? Because I always feel like, I'm like, is this a, is this a factoid? Is it like, is it true that you're not allowed to go in unarmed or unaccompanied? 
Okay, yeah, this there is loads of rumors going around about this, but it right. So it is in the wiki, so we are playing to brief. It's not yeah. a player made up thing. It is actually oh, in our right. brief. Okay. Yeah, it's not a player made up thing. Uh-huh. Um, some players might go over the top with it, <laughs> but some people just get really excited about it. So yeah. none of most of the veteran players don't. Some of the new players just get so super excited with the fact they get to play an orc and get to deny people entry. But that's not what actually happens. Mm. So the weapon thing, it's all about the fact that we used to be slaves. Yeah. We were never allowed to carry weapons. Mm -hmm. And then obviously after rebellion and we got our own freedom, it became a legal... We were legally allowed to carry weapons. It's our right. Ah, Why wouldn't we? We're Mm -hmm. just exercising our right. And and everyone, like all of the humans in the empire, don't even realise how important it is that, that they had that right. Okay. So when we see humans, we're like, are you armed? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, why not? Why are you not armed? Why would you not carry a weapon? You can. Yeah. Why would you not? It's not because we think we're going to get attacked. Yeah, that right? the, yeah, that's so interesting because you hear so. But that's the thing. I was, I was interested. To, I, I couldn't wait to ask you that because <laughs> as you go around camp, people are like going, "Oh yeah, you know, you can't." And you're like, "Why?" And they give you like a million different stories. Oh, it's because that you, you go in there. And it's, it's a sign of arrogance if you don't wear one. And it, it's a real cool part of the game, though. The fact that there is like all this speculation. And yeah. also, it's very good game, especially when you're speaking to new players. Like, if we're speaking to new players in Dawn, and it's like, they're like, oh, yeah, I need to go to the Imperial. And it's fun to say to them, oh, make sure you go in pairs. It's a and make sign sure of this. respect. Yeah. It's a sign yeah. of respect to us to carry a weapon because we would expect everyone to because we can. Yeah. So, we, when we see another orc walk, walking camp, we always say to them, do you have anyone to go with you? No, well, I'll come. If you have a weapon, no, here you go, borrow mine. And that's what we say to humans when they come in. They come in and we say, have you got a weapon? And they're like, no, okay, hold on a second. There you go, borrow mine. <laughs> that's, the most, that, that's the kind of things that's going to happen. Or we might yeah. say to you, well, why are you not carrying a weapon? And then we'll, yeah. and then it opens up dialogue. It opens up role play because that's role the whole play. point of these things in the wiki. They're tools for you to use to enable role play with people. Yeah. So yeah. that's what this is. It's a tool for us to say on the gate, have you got a weapon? No. Then we're going to have a whole conversation about it. Yeah. Cause... And now the thing about uh, being accompanied uh-huh. is orcs. Um, it's part of our hearth magic that we draw strength from each other. Again, because from being slaves, oh. um, we don't like being alone. When an orc is alone, they get picked on. They used to get um, singled out and bullied and by the humans when we were slaves. So um, part of our hearth magic is we do draw strength from each other. There are certain instances where role play effects don't affect orcs if they're with other orcs oh yeah oh, so, I didn't know that. so for <laughs> us we draw strength from it and if an orc is alone uh-huh. to us it's suspicious why are you alone why do you not want to be with other orcs knowing that they get strength from us why would they not want to be alone so when we see humans that are alone we're like why are you alone do none of your friends not want to be with you are you not trustworthy are you yeah. ill so I play a physic. So that's the route I go down when I see someone who's alone. I'm like, are you okay? Yeah. Are you ill? Do I need to, and I'll start like going to check them over. Are you okay? Do you have, are you trying to hide an illness that you don't want people to know? Is that why you're alone kind of thing? Again, it's just a tool for opening up role play with people. Yeah. So it's a real cool little, little thing to play with when it comes to like culture, a bit role playing that thing is like, exactly. oh, well, this seems normal to me. And that kind of confusion is is the fun bit. Like when you're on the other mm-hmm. end of it, and these the orcs are like going, do, do, "Do you want? You need a weapon?" And I'm like, "Why do I need a weapon? Why do I need a weapon?" <laughs> They're like, "Good, you're good to go. Go in." And you're like, "What's going to happen to me?" Yeah. So, and it, you know, another thing is that we're quite tactile. Orcs are. Um, it, it used to be in the wiki. I'm not sure if it still is because mm-hmm. some people might not like being touched. So I'm yeah. not sure if it's still there, but it did historically used to be in there that orcs are quite tactile. So with other orcs, we know which ones we can role play like that with. So there'll be some orcs that I'll be, as I'm talking to them, I'll be fiddling with bits on their kit kind of stuff. Or, right. or if I see something that's not like it's been twisted, I'll untwist it and pat it down and make it straight for them. And um, there are some, um, who is any that I know? And they don't like being touched, do they? It's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and there are some that I know personally that I can do this type of role play. And it's really good when um, when you're having that conflicting role play with them, whereas I'm just like reaching, I see them, my friends, and I go and I hug them. And then they're like all stiff because I'm getting really close. And I stand really close to them as I'm talking to them because that's another thing orcs do. We don't, we have no personal space. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Personal space for orcs is an like I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's due to the fact when we were slaves, when we were like in the mines, everyone they just used to sort of dog pile to sleep on top of each other. So for us, personal space isn't a thing. So when we're talking to each other, we're all huddled quite close. And it's not because we're keeping secrets, it's just how we have conversations. Yeah. So doing that to an Urizeni is <laughs> quite funny. Yeah, I picked up on that as well. But again, because you don't know but that's how good is the system that like it's you 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 follow your own brief and you you follow even if you follow it loosely a lot of the time you're just totally oblivious to the other briefs and everyone else is following theirs even again even if it's just loosely and it just makes these like 10 very distinct Mm -hmm. different ways of behavior you know because even you saying that i'm like yeah actually every time I'm like, what is this, is this all trying to tell me a secret? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. Well, it's, it's <laughs> just like, you, like, with you saying that as well, I'm like, no, I remember one of the Imperial Orcs fixing the ribbon on my on my, my armor last event because it had like twisted over and they came and they fixed the ribbon for me. And they yeah. was just like, oh, wow, that's really nice. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So you've got to think like, um, oh, is it meerkats when they all sit there grooming each other, or you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's and I'm picturing all the imperial horses meerkats just, just just sitting in a circle, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see a bird of prey up ahead. Yeah. yeah. So so here's a question: What so do do do, do the imperial orcs or orcs prefer to be called the imperial orcs? Or orcs, because my character has been pulled up about this, but from humans in the empire, I think I've said orcs. They went imperial orcs. So what what do they prefer being called? Imperial orcs. Imperial orcs. Imperial orcs. Imper- we're very proud of the fact that we're part of empire, mm-hmm. and um, you know, not the game as in empire, yeah, as yeah, in yeah. the yeah. empire. Yeah. Empire. yeah. So <laughs> we're very proud of the fact, and we're. Um, I don't know if you know, but the empire, um, the orcs are the most law abiding nation we won't willingly break laws no and if um for some reason there's an ancestor screaming in our ear and it forces us to do something we will instantly walk as soon as the ancestor's gone out of our head and we've calmed down and uh, we would go down to the um oh, i forgot what they're called militia yeah with the yeah the militia yeah the, yeah, the yeah. and yeah. and hand ourselves in and report ourselves for doing something for breaking the law I used to have an iron tide that did that. He um he he hated Verushkins. He was an old orc, um, uh-huh. and he was was actually a slave. Um, so he lived through the rebellion. Mm-hmm. And he um, if a Verushkin came into camp, so by imperial law, I think you're allowed to you tell someone to have to leave your nation three times. Mm-hmm. If they don't, you're allowed to knock them unconscious and drag them out. Okay. Yeah. Right. So he did yeah. that. <laughs> he asked them to leave and he was screaming in their face, but he did it three times and then locked them out and dragged them down outside of the camp, called for a healer to make so they, so they wouldn't like get hurt. And then went and marched down to the militia and told them what he'd done. I turned myself in. Yes. <laughs> yep, yep. So, so um, yeah, so we're, and we're very, very, very proud of the fact that we're part of, of the Empire. It's our clan. Yeah. We are yeah. 100% pro empire and so because of that we're imperial orcs yeah yes yeah, so that's an important uh, th- that's another thing you brought up as well so like the because it's recent history like how recent is it for the slavery so i think it's quite cool that you could be like so how basically my question is how old do you have to be as an orc currently to role play someone who was a slave the rebellion was 60 years ago at the last game okay so is so... that would, would that be very old for an orc then um, well, orcs have got the same le- uh, lifespan as humans. Okay. However, they mm-hmm. don't lose their vigor. Uh huh. So, um, an orc will turn what is considered old within the space of two days to um, eight days. Oh, so okay. they will go white. So uh-huh. uh, when you see a white orc, that signifies that they're old, and it mm-hmm. takes them anything in between two days to to a week to go completely white. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And that means that um, they're an old orc, which is why all of the old orcs are white. So if you see a white orc, they would have lived through the rebellion. Mm-hmm. Um, but they don't lose their vigor. Yeah. So they say strong. Um, right up until the day, that like we haven't really had any imperial orcs that have died of old age yet. Yeah. Because. Yeah. 
they're all you know yeah they're all, yeah. they're all still they're all yeah. still around all the ones that have died have died because we're a military race we go out to fight for the empire and we die on the battlefield that's what yeah. we do it's our thing yeah. so like when we have um when we have orcs that die we i had a lot that died at the last battle i had three iron tide that died at the last uh event yeah, yeah. and uh, i think there was eight imperial orcs in total yeah, yeah. so um everyone's getting sad about it and stuff like that and you've got some of the orcs that don't play um uh, military orcs mm -hmm. saying we're going to go and make people pay and then i personally was like no no i'm not going to go and um go down to the military council and start complaining that these orcs have died because that's what we do yeah that's the risk we take that is what we're for we're we're for going to the battlefield knowing that we might not come back off the battlefield that we might be starting our journey across the abyss nothing went wrong on the battlefield and when we weren't the only people to lose lose other nations did as well yeah. so we weren't the only ones yeah. so and, and i would say i'm not taking away the glory from these iron tide that have died by whinging about the fact that they've died that's taking away the agency that they had to go to that battlefield and risk their life for the empire yeah and that's not what we're about so yeah i exactly. I, I love i love these like inter like internal national kind of conflicts that you have even though it's, it's sometimes moral or mm -hmm. ethical as well and it's just like you're like you're like circling the brief you know and it's it's really cool because we, we had the similar thing in in dawn are you just like because we lost like we lost like 20 on that yeah it was, <laughs> we it was, lost, yeah, it was, it was 20 it was, early 20s it was we, we it lost. was rough but we also like kicked ass you know and it was like it was glorious and we did it and we also did it for i mean we did it for the empire but we did it for the urizeni <laughs> homeland and it was a little bit like <laughs> should we be pissed off here like should we be pissed off that they're like stopping us like the empire's stopping us getting the barons and they're putting all these obstacles in front of us and then we've just gone out and sacrificed but then you circle back around the brief and just go, well, no. it was a glorious thing to do. You know, we got the job <laughs> done and <laughs> that was that. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. We actually got to fight alongside the Imperial Orcs. So it was the first time that I've ever fought with the, the Imperial Orcs. And um, we were all out. The Imperial Orcs were out first and we were out right behind them and we all charged yeah, out together. That. I was that like, was... Cause the first time we've been with the Imperial Orcs and I was like... <laughs> Are they going that, first? <laughs> yeah, we we saw this model um, first in um first in last out. Yeah. So we're always first in. Yeah. Um I think you had as many people die as we took to the battlefield that event. We yeah. that was a small force for the Imperial Orcs. We didn't yeah. have a lot of us at the event because um like Iron Tide, we were less than half strength anyway, because we had so many people on holiday. Mm -hmm. And um so we only had uh five of us take the battlefield yeah and only two of us came off yeah out of the yeah. iron tide but so many orcs died that event considering we only took i'm sure we only took we hit the field of 25 mm. and uh, eight of us died so that was a huge chunk for us is, yeah is that is that a concern when you've got a, a one of the smaller nations you know d does it because it must change the dynamic of the nation a lot mm -hmm. if you do lose mm -hmm. a chunk so say like yeah like that that event if you didn't have a lot of people show up and then a load of people, I know we, I mean, it was the Sunday at least, but I like, say if a load of, you know, if, if they did die on like the Saturday or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, I had one die on Saturday, in fact. Yeah, does, does that change, that must change the, the whole dynamic yeah. of the weekend because all of a sudden you've lost a lot of, because I imagine there's like, obviously you've got hats to hang out, hand out and, mm -hmm. you know, we're in one of the bigger nations. So, you know, we, there's always, if we lose a general, which we did, unfortunately, but there's always people so ready to... Red, did you? Oh no! no uh, just there's a story about that as well, which we could go back to if you want. But yeah. remind me to mention. Yeah, that. no, 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 definitely. But like, what I was, I was gonna say is like, we have a lot of people to replace those people with hats, you know. And there's someone usually yeah, buying for it. Yeah, yeah. What is that like? Because you, you must have to be like, oh no, you know, who, who actually out of the ten of us, who wants to be general? Is it? <laughs> is it a bit like that? Yeah. So, um, I think we've at the moment we've got more hats than people. There's a yeah. lot of, um, of of stuff in the Imperial Orc Nation where we where there's some, currently no one sitting in it just because there's not a lot of players. Wow. And some of the players we do have, some of them are quite happy to not have hats. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we're... Um, but at E1, we're going to have a lot more people coming back to, to the event. Like, uh -huh. they'll be back off holidays and nice. stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. Um, and I know for, uh, from, like, for the Iron Tide, most of mine are trying to make sure they've got no no holidays conflicting so they're going to be there all the year which would be really great yeah do you, so, do, you, um, do you find that you get like do you get new players coming in 
fresh to Empire going into the Orcs, or is it usually oh, yeah. really? Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. That's good though. That's good. Yeah, yeah, really good. yeah. We've had a lot of people that have just basically hit the ground running and jumped straight in the deep end playing an Orc at Empire. Nice. Never. We've had a few people that have never done LARP before, yeah. never ever, and they've come in and they've played a lot and they've absolutely smashed it. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely that's amazing. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they've I... just like fished water with it. It's yeah. been brilliant. Do, do you think it's it's something? Uh, do, do you think it's anything to do with like the the type of costume as well? Do you think it's because it's you are covering your face as well that it does help, yeah. especially for people that have never done it before, because it gives you um, a sense of uh, well, how do, I don't even know how to say the word anonymity. Anonymity, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anonymous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it gives you a sense of of that. So yeah. um, it really helps as well to know when you're in character and out of character, and to put that persona on when you put your mask on, you're your character. Yeah. yeah. So it's really easy to stay in character with a mask on. So that really helps with people that have never been to if, if they can handle the mask, then it actually makes it a lot easier to play an orc than it does to play uh, something without the with a mask on. Yeah. Is is, is there is there a is there a period that you can go through like, oh yeah, I need to get used to this, or is it always just a this is what it is to wear the mask all weekend and yeah. you either love it and go with it or it's not for you? Yeah, you you instant you know instantly. Yeah. There's been a few people that have um, that are both experienced LARPers or new that have come in and within 24 hours they've killed off their character and they're off playing the human. <laughs> so it's not for everyone. No. They just can't yeah. handle the mask. Yeah, there's so, something that's cur that I get curious about because I've heard so many people like say that they actually would be in the Imperial Orcs if it wasn't for the mask. You know? um, and so some, pe some people have... Um, uh, are, are sight impaired or hearing impaired and it's mm -hmm. just impossible for them to wear the mask anyway uh but yeah i know i was talking to a lot of people that they their favorite law is the imperial orcs but they, they can't do it because of the mask which is a, sh it's a shame i but. mean they might be drawing on you know when you obviously when you're monster and you wear your monster masks mm -hmm. and yeah. them things are dog shite because they're not for your face do you yeah. know what i mean it's not that the mask itself is crap when you're putting on like for me i've got a, i've got a tiny head mm. i've got a really small head like i buy children's size hats kind of thing yeah. and um so putting on one of their masks the, the mouth area is hanging around here somewhere do you know what yeah. i mean and the eyes are like that and yeah. so i look like something out of the goonies with a... <laughs> 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 if i put on one of them so um so what we when they're thinking of masks, that's what they're thinking of. However, all of us, obviously, we've got our own masks, so we tailor them specifically for us. For you, yeah. So my my current mask is my fourth mask as Flax, and it's honestly, I've got it from Monster Minx. Can't big Monster that Minx. person up okay. in, like, enough, because it is, at my alt masks, it is the most comfortable one I've ever worn. And when I ordered it, I asked her not to cut out the eye holes on the mouth or anything like that, so I'll do all that myself, because oh, I've clever. been quite experienced in it. And um, so what I do is, yeah, I cut all that out to how I wanted it. And I cut, because my character's got long hair. Mm -hmm. So she has long, like, tiny, really thin plaits. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I cut a hole all the way down the back of my mask. I then pull it to how tight I want. So then I, I end up cutting a triangle out of it and adding a zip. So then when I when I pull the zip, it pulls the mask tight onto my face. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. So and I've done that for um quite a few other orcs where they uh -huh. said, Oh, can you put a zip in the back of it for me? And I'm like, Do you want me to? And in fact, I've got one um a commission that I need to do at the moment mm -hmm. where if it's too big, you just cut a triangle out of the back, add the zip, and then it makes it tight for your face. And you can so they're the tricks to make it more comfortable. Because I've so, I've seen yours. I've seen um your one on you before and i do remember thinking that it's it looks so like obviously it looks like it's your actual skin because mm. it just is like it looks so tight and just so well fitted around yeah there. so i didn't realize that's how you did it but that, yeah that's yeah it. that's part of the tricks so and, and it's got padding on the top as well to help keep um uh heat in but then i've also add a sponge to it if i want to aerate it kind of thing if that oh, makes sense to yeah. add bit of um bit of room for the air to go through for airflow yeah because that's another question with the orc kit is like how is it because i mean we, we had the, the, the issue is weather wasn't like terrible like e1 was cold but what is it like when it gets like hot because it got oh. very hot e2 and e3 yeah. 
Yeah, we 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 tend to stay in camp when it's warm. Very 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 rarely go out. Mm -hmm. The mask does get really hot on your face when it's out there. So when we're going to battle, and we're having to wait in front of the sentinel gate. A lot of time you see when it's hot, you see us with our shield over it like that because we're trying to <laughs> you know cover it, and give a shade to our face okay. because it does get really hot. And then you hear us referring to like. Oh, the inside of my face is sweating. It's so hot. <laughs> We're sweating <laughs> on the inside of our masks. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to come around with some Dornish Paracels or something and offer them out. <laughs> like, um, it it, it like... can get, yeah, really hot, but we're all used to it. So we stay well hydrated. We all carry bottles of water around. And there are a lot of places around the battlefield, which most of us know about, not the battlefield, sorry, around Anvil. Mm -hmm. Where they and I don't know if you see posts got now and then on Facebook where they say um, it's going to be really hot at this event. To all of you Imperial Orc players, my camp is a safe haven for you. Oh, you need to take a break. Okay. So there are places around Anvil that if we want to get from A to B, we can stop at Z and F on the way for pit stops to have breaks, walk breaks, <laughs> and get um at, you know out the sun for a bit. It's great. It's uh, I'm so glad that the Imperial Orcs players they make that commitment because it adds just so much more immersion in camp because I think like uh, yeah I, I feel like it just wouldn't be the same if it, everyone was human in camp and the only time you saw any Orcs was when you mm. went through the Sentinel Gate uh yeah it's just it's just so wonderful and we were um we we're chatting earlier about our favorite moments and everything throughout the year with it being our first year and mine was just like without a doubt was getting to go and go into the imperial art camp and the role play in there and all the fun things that happened in there and i just didn't want to leave that was one of my favorite favorite parts there is just the role play is just absolutely incredible it's I, I do love our role play i am quite proud of how intense it can get sometimes as well I so i had one of my most intense events last event and yeah. um like in oc i had a brilliant time i really enjoyed it in character it was tough yeah it's... <laughs> yeah it was really tough because it was the anniversary last event and i've never yeah. and honestly i've all the years i've been playing flax i've never never ever come across so many instances in different parts of the game where humans were making decisions for orcs and to top it all off it was on the event where it was the anniversary of our freedom and i'm oh, like wow. so who do you think are you still treating us like slaves that we're not intelligent enough to make our own decisions? Are you, do you think you're our overlords still? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> and I came across it in several different parts like I've been, it, like I interacted with. And by the end of the event, I was literally, I remember standing against, like we've got this really tall table by the air circle. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. seen it. And I was just standing there leaning against it, just thinking, <laughs> <laughs> Pff, my mind was just exploding. You, you know, of all the times of that, to make it to come across it, for it to be the anniversary we, um, mm -hmm. event was just so surreal. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we did. I mean, we didn't. We we saw the we saw you all come round and uh, do your thing in the glory mm. square, and it was that is so. I I keep saying this to people. Um, I feel like I'm just banging my head against the wall with dawn, so I don't think it's going to happen. But I'm jealous of of the, the, the things that you did there. For your anniversary you go around and what was great about that is that you came around and it wasn't uh oh yeah let's celebrate let's just celebrate our freedom it was let's celebrate the dornish that we've known and the dornish mm. that we've interacted with and that it was like an appreciation and what the imperial orcs bring to dawn and the empire mm -hmm. and i'm so, I, i'm je i was jealous of that i was jealous of the wassail thing that the marchers did i yes. was jealous of uh, I love <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm just like all these other nations they go around to all these other nations and i'm just like what the hell do we do what do we bring to, <laughs> to the empire but it just it, it dawn's a weird one because it's got a it's it's a there's a very it's very individualistic you know mm. it's very it's it's not you know I, i'm i'm jealous of the the imperial orcs and because you you guys are like a unit close unit, yeah yeah a close unit. yeah yeah even though we're individual groups all of them groups we all, we all uh, are still one mm -hmm. so like, you know like with the whole being alone thing mm -hmm. um yeah it doesn't matter which which banner will accompany you so if i want to go out i'm iron tied flax but one of the red hand but no iron tied are available and one of the red hands will come with me that's fine for me still an imperial orc doesn't matter that they're a different banner we're all still imperial orcs so mm -hmm. yeah yeah. I, I do i do love that close knit of the um of the imperial orcs so your group what what are the groups called in 
so mine's Iron Tide. Yeah. So what? What are the? Because it was. Is it? Is it a clan? Is it the? Oh, uh, banners. The banners. Right. Okay. Yeah, we call yeah. ourselves banners. Um, officially. Uh huh. It's um. Oh. Forgotten what they're called. We don't use it because it clashes with something else. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. it clashes what with what we call our armies, and I'm having an absolute brain fart on what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because obviously, like we have, we have like houses and and the Navari we were learning the other day have like steadings and stridings yeah. and things like that. So what's what's the uh, obviously the like I think like adoption is is a thing throughout the entire empire. But what's what's the is it a supposed to be a family unit or is it a just a load of orcs that have imperial orcs that have just um, decided to live together? It's weird you mention adoption because that's actually something that's written into our brief as well really and again it's for an oc reason but mm. it's really cool of how they've written it in so obviously you're going to have parents come into empire and they're going to yeah. have kids kids yeah. might not necessarily want to wear masks <laughs> they're tiny they might not want to do it although have you ever seen a tiny orc they are fucking adorable yeah i've, I've, <laughs> I've not seen one yet and I well, want yeah we haven't to. seen one we've heard stories so of them we've yeah heard stories i mean of them. i'm not a kid person but i saw an, an orc a kid wearing an orc mask and it was so cute my character adopted that orc right there's so there's this so flax now has an adopted well she has two but she has an adopted um uh orc, and she's called little han um but so it's written because kids might not necessarily want to wear masks yeah. it's written into our brief that orcs if they see a child that is homeless will instantly adopt it no matter what race it is yeah homeless children children without parents is abhorrent to us we hate it we can't yeah. Again, it's all part of that being closeness and stuff like that. So we will instantly adopt a child. So I've adopted two children in play. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so adoption for us is a thing. And in part of our brief as well is we're encouraged as children, orcs are encouraged to not necessarily join the same banner that your parents are in, that you were born in. Okay, yeah. Okay. It, it strengthens ties. So Flax's story, she was a rich, she was born into the First Legion. That's it. That's the name of her banner's Legion. The <laughs> Legion, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're called Legions, but uh, our armies are also called Legions. So it gets confusing. So we call our personal ones banners, banners and then the yeah. armies are Legion. Yeah. So um, so I was born into the First Legion. My parents were First Legion. Um, and then I started training under... Um, um, like an auntie who was a physic in the first legion mm -hmm. um but there's not a lot of physics like you know uh, groups that are dedicated to healing in the first legion and there was the red hands in the second legion so um my character left and joined the red hands in the second legion and oh, okay. um and it's encouraged to do that as children because it it strengthens bonds across the whole imperial orc nation because you've got family in other banners and other other legions yeah so we have like banter and right and you know a playful a rivalry, rivalry yeah. yeah but it's it's not real rivalry it literally is only just like you know playing with each other because that's your family yeah they're more extended Even though they're family in, yeah yeah and, and real family so my yeah. my parents are in the first legion oh, but okay. i'm in the second legion so so it's actually it's encouraged to do that on purpose to create um bonds and of obviously you, you don't want to have a close knit bloodline either. That's not good for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, that's what I was good when you when you said, oh yeah, it's good for for bonds. I'm like, yeah, it's it's good for the gene pool as well. <laughs> keep it, yep. keep it, right a little bit. Keep yeah. it diverse. So like, so like the the obviously the adoption thing is is written like meta into the system for mm -hmm. that that type of reasons. But it, it brought something interesting to my mind there because someone said something similar about the Yotun. So because it, it, it is there any like barbarian orc nations that you have like similar? It's very similar types of traditions with. Is there like a greater orcish tradition that goes back even further since you're like a new nation? um well i don't know if you know but every single imperial orc is a descendant of one of the barbarians mm -hmm. okay so um iron tides are mostly descendants of Yotun, i believe right. i'm i'm personally not because obviously uh -huh. i was born in the first legion mm -hmm. and um so i have a different descendant to the rest of the iron tide but we're all descendants of one of the barbarian races wow. so a lot of our characteristics will be following on from them and almost all of the ancestors we hear are from them barbarian races oh, that's that's so that's such a cool 
<laughs> concept <laughs> to play with in in character because you can just be like, oh yeah, you know, I have Jotun, you know, mm -hmm. ancestry, and mm -hmm. this is why we this is why we do this, which is similar yeah. to the Jotun. I think that's that's cool, and especially if you've got a mix as well. So mm -hmm. I, I bet you could go, oh yeah, that uh, banner over there, do this, but that's because they're. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly, exactly. To whoever. Again, just creates even more role play and more opportunities like that. Fantastic! You poured your beer, Robin. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a good point, Kelly. Actually, well, how what is it like trying to drink drink like ale and things like that when you've got your mask on? No, I I won't eat with my mask on. Really? It's just too much hassle trying to get it. It gets sometimes it gets on your mask and you don't know it's there because it's obviously not your real skin, so you can't feel it. You've got food stuck to it. Oh man! But, so... And and if you get it on your and then you try to wipe it off and you wipe your face paint off and stuff like that. So drinking, do it with a straw. Uh -huh. Eating for me is just a no no. I I go. We got an OC section of our tent, so I go and sit out in the OC oh. section, take my mask off, eat my food. Yeah, I was going to ask you that actually because like when it comes to like time in and, and role play, obviously everyone kind of goes into role play, but mm. yeah, it, it feels like it's you know it's fluid a lot of the time because especially this is like our first year of barping completely, mm -hmm. and we came into it through like D and D and that type of role play. It seems a lot more fluid, but what what is it like in the? I've just often wondered, like, what's it like in the orc camp? Because you kind of have to, you all have to, like, make a conscious decision. Right, so almost time in, let's all put our masks on. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you find it difficult to, like, tell when people are, like, in, out, in and out of character? And, like, no, it's, it's easy because if your mask is on, you're in character. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm very, I don't know if you've been into the Iron Tide tent um, no. in our camp. I think this i might be mistaken but the tent that i was in it was really big one huge table in the middle and it had like um i think it did have like an oc t area out the back as yeah. people going in and out that's where they i have was. a chandelier hanging yes in. yeah that, that's my tent the, every, that, <laughs> nice. that tent yeah that tent's my everything in it is mine so that's the iron tide tent and so everything you know that whole in character section we have that again behind the curtain oh, nice wow. yeah yeah and that's where we all sleep so um, we all sleep in there. So that's the OC yeah. section. So that's where we go to eat. And if we want some FaceTime, that's where we go. I am very strict in my tent mm -hmm. to keep in the front in character and no OC stuff there. So no cans, no makeup. Don't leave your mask on the bed. If you want to have FaceTime, you take it out the back with you. Yeah. It, the I, IC section is IC and I'm very strict with it. You ask my boys, I say to them, when it's coming to time in, if there's anything here, I'm flinging it in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> Move it. It's, it's going in the bin. Yeah. And I do put it in the bin. So they learn very, very quickly with me that I if I follow through with my threats. So it. if I say to them, don't do this or do this, otherwise I'm gonna do this, then I and ask them about the spoon if you see any iron tires. Ask, ask them, them about, about the spoon. Okay, yeah. I'll ask them about the spoon. <laughs> okay. I'll have to I'll have to find a reasoning character to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> so what's to do with iron tired wax and the spoon? <laughs> the what? spoon. I, I guess that's, yeah i guess that's kind of what i meant like when i was saying like is it it is kind of difficult in and out of character because yeah there is a lot of just like because for us we can just be like oh yeah i'm in character blah, 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 and then i can just like turn around and do something out of character like mm -hmm. at the at the front of my tent or something you're like oh yeah you want a snack oh yeah yeah i'll go out and grab this or grab a can of coke or something yeah but for, for, for you it's not i can imagine it's not it's a whole thing is it like you have to go wrong so, go in yeah. take the mask off. <laughs> With drinks and food, I before um, on Friday, before it goes time in, I've got a whole food table set up in the tent as well. So we take all of the food out of its wrappers and put it in the basket. So it's all in character and all the oh. drink gets decanted into in character bottles and stuff like that. So if people want to eat, they can do. They're still in character while they're doing it because we've made sure we've prepped it all before it goes time in. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'm guessing that... Um... For, for the duration of the the game that's been running, I'm guessing that there is like obviously regular Imperial Orc players. I know you said you've got new players, but mm -hmm. because you're a small nation, is it a very yeah? Is it very communal? As in like everybody knows obviously everybody? Because in my in our nation, I still don't. There's people that I still haven't met, or I see I see a picture of someone in Dawn. And I'm just like, how how have I not <laughs> met that person? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, because it's so small and close knit, we do recognise everyone. Um, it might take us an event or two with the new ones, but um, yeah, you do start to eventually recognise who's who and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and 
what ha- tends to happen though is when orcs die, they're just so relieved to be out of the mask for a bit. They might go off and play another character, like another nation for a little bit. Yeah. But they almost always come back. Come back. And you know, the call of the Imperial Orcs, you can't miss it in your heart. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I, I totally, like, I, I can understand what maybe why people like to jump around nation and it kind of dip their toe in everywhere and experience all of the stuff. But for me personally, like the more I learn about like my nation's lore and the more I fall in love with it, the more I'm like, how would I like, how, how would I, I would just, just miss it. Like with all my heart, if I had to like go to, not had to, but if I went yeah. to another nation, you know, and then go, Oh yeah. The, the, in Dawn, we do this. Oh no, actually I'm not in Dawn anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it must but be you difficult. Know, you might find something else that sings to you. If you go it's to true. another nation, yeah. you, you know, yeah, you yeah. delve into another nation's um, uh, background and hearth magic and stuff like that. And you'd be like, Oh, I never knew this. This is so cool. Yeah, but the the, the law. Yeah, but that's the thing. This how the, the game is. The game is well written like that. Because even just and the best way to find out. I mean, the wiki is is the wiki. I think Wikipedia mm-hmm. is a little bit of a little bit of an outdated kind of medium. But regardless of that, the best way to find the lore out is one in character or two. You know, like conversations like this. Like I've, mm-hmm. I had no idea about any of this with the. Impression. Yeah. honestly i had um spent a little bit of time reading the wiki and things like that and i learned so much in the imperial orc camp when mm-hmm. i um mainly because i was terrified at one point because i i forgot someone's name <laughs> and it was because i hadn't written it down correctly in my book oh and then, this is a thing I, I'd written it in the wrong way around in my book, so I then got... Oh, did you put the banner second? <gasps> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry! Oh, right, But okay. then I learned okay. all about this. I had no idea about this, and I got this whole lesson on it, and then I made sure I've got a long list of all the boxes. So, so, so well, <laughs> the right way around. So, so, Ke- so Kelly, why, why, is, why is it important to put... So you, you put the... So if it's so like our banner is like our surname. So we're right. human, like you know, in real life, your surname second. It represents yeah. your family, doesn't it? But the Imperial Orcs is first. Right. So okay. I'm not I'm not flax iron tide. I'm iron tide flax. Iron tide flat, Right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. iron tide is my banner, my family. Mm-hmm. Um, not you know my my found yeah. family, yeah. and then I am flax. Yeah. But All right. I'm not for the, for us. It's not. I'm I'm not. I'm not just flax. I'm iron tide flax. That is my identity. Yeah. I am an iron tide. Yeah. It's part of my identity. It's just that's just how we are. We always put banner first. Yeah, yeah. Which is, again, it's just a cultural thing because, like, yeah, yeah. In, in the real world, if someone went to write your name, you'd be like, no, no, no that's my that's my first name. That's my second yeah. name. You know, you would, yeah. you would obviously correct them. You know. So I want to ask you about what, hap- what happened to the what happened to your general. Uh, oh, the general. Your... Okay. So my bestie who played an orc for the first time last year, yeah. um, Stacy, nice. and. Um, Oh, she played the most dumbest orc ever. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. So she, she played an in-character sister of a previous orc who was also dumb. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So she so she played this character to be um like to be his sister. And so she purposely played the, played her really, really dumb. And it was just absolute delight. And um she wanted to be general. Uh-huh. That was her goal. To, um but the character was only 18 years old, the character uh-huh. was. Yeah. And uh-huh. so really young, naive, but um she managed to get general this year. She became general Ooh, at nice. the last event. So um and it was a milestone not only for the Imperial Orcs, but for Empire, because she was the very first female Imperial Orc general. Nice. And um so and this at E4, it was the first time ever since Empire has been running that they have had a female general sitting in the meeting for every single nation. Wow, that's cool. And then she died the next day. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh. So... At least she made history before she died. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> did, 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 did she at least manage to make any way... Obviously, she made history, but she, did she manage to make any way... Was she elected, like... At that summit, or was it yes. the summit before? No, she was elected oh. at. Oh. So she was elected on Friday, no Saturday morning, Saturday afternoonish time. Went to the for her first meeting Saturday afternoon. Um, oh. already had some plans and stuff that she wanted to do, and she had loads of people come up to go. I'm oh. so glad there's a female general. Oh, and no. Sunday morning, died on the battlefield. Oh no, he didn't even get a ch- player. Didn't even get a chance to do any downtime stuff or anything. <laughs> 
God, that's what first orders in? So she didn't even get orders with her name on them. Oh, that sucks. No, that sucks. so um, rest in rest in peace, Iron Tide Wessex. Oh, and it's it's thing is it's difficult as well. Well, I'm, I'm you know this is the way I would look at it. Like if if you've got a character that's got right, they've become general. It's kind of difficult because it seems off. Like making a character again that's got exactly yeah. the same goal and be like right this character is going to be general now you kind of have to i imagine you have to let it like just lay oh, a little bit she's gone the complete opposite so from playing a dirty grubby orc she's now a dornish lady oh well there you oh. go <laughs> seen the light seen the light we'll we'll, we'll trade we'll, we'll trade <laughs> that's the thing as well do, do you ever get like that <laughs> yeah you can you can you you love you love the imperial orcs roman <laughs> Robin gets giddy about going off to see the Imperial Orcs. What? Bye, up to the Orcs. What? Yeah, why did you go to the... Did you not go to the camp at E4 and you didn't have any reason to? Yeah, I just wanted to go to the camp. Yeah, you just thought, I'm going to... Oh, you wanted to sell some stuff, right? And I was like... But I had nothing to sell. I just wanted to go chat to people. <laughs> Don't say that when you come to the game. If we're like, Matt and times we've had people come up, we're like, oh, what, what are you here for? I'm just here to look around. And we're like... We're not Zoom. <laughs> well, luckily I had a name. It was actually no um, one of the, um, it was one of the Iron Tides that I spoke to at E3 and I wanted to go and speak to them again. Um, they weren't there. Um, I, I don't know what Peter Preston still is. I won't say it um, at the minute, but I, they weren't he there when I was looking for them. So I was like, okay, I'll come back later and look for them. <laughs> um, but it ran, ran out. I've got reasons to go there at E1 mm -hmm. though. I, I yeah, love, several reasons. Yeah, I, I love how the Imperial Orcs. When you go into, I've only been in the in into the camp once to look for someone, and I, I but I love how it's like, like yeah, how protective you all are of obviously, uh, you, you know, you, you as a group and then as mm. individuals, and so you go in, you're just, oh, I'm looking for this person, and it's like, well, who who's asking? What why why do you want them? What are you gonna mm. give me if I tell you where they are? That's what I got. I kept getting the run around. Whereas like if someone comes up to me in dawn, they're like, Oh well, yeah, we're looking we're looking for this person. I'm just like, oh, they're over there. Hello. And I'll just like wave to them. <laughs> just like it's but I, I love I love the contrast in that yeah. way though. That's one of my favorite things. I do love how um when because I'm I'm the bone setter of our group as well as being the war leader. And mm -hmm. um so I get a lot of people coming in to ask for me. And whenever I've got someone coming to speak to me guarantee i can look over one of my shoulders and there'll be a, one of my iron tides stood there just just stood there just in case nice. something happens yeah, yeah. yeah all the time if i'm whenever I, I i don't even have to look if someone if i hear someone calling my name i get up and walk out and go and talk to someone i'll be talking to this human and i can just feel this presence next to me and one of my iron tides will be there with me oh yeah I, I, I absolutely love that i feel so protected with them because they're all massive compared to me as well i'm literally the shortest iron tide <laughs> it's it's so cool though it it, it, it really is oh yeah, it's amazing i mean um there was there's been a couple of times so there were them um, some of the imperial orcs been um within dawn and um i've had a bit of role play with them each time they have um there was it was last time i was speaking to to one of them and they were pretending to be dawnish and then they were had like flower crowns and everything on they were like no no dawnish don't tell anyone and we had all this back and forth for a while and basically um our characters were on a quest to get love stories mm -hmm. and i needed one from the imperial orcs and we were at Sarah 10 and i was beating him so he was like it's not like it's not like an imperial orc is going to walk up and i'm like there's one there with a flower <laughs> crown on <laughs> i walked off, over and i was like come on we're different stories of love <laughs> they were wearing a flower crown i was like oh what is this what is this <laughs> so what's the what's the, so you mentioned the, the the bone setter what's what is that title oh traders for? that's what our traders are called ah. we call them um, they're called the bone setters because we're not only um, and they're normally physics mm -hmm. as well so we're responsible for not only um your body mm -hmm. uh -huh. but your other needs as well whether that be armor swords weapons herbs stuff like that whatever you might need in the nation it's yeah. the responsibility of the bone setters to get so they're the traders yeah so yeah i'm the trader of our group you're the trade trade, but then you obviously you're also fit. Do, do you run the again because you you go out in a small, quite a small group onto the battlefield? Like how how <laughs> you you've you've probably only got like 
one or two two or three healers right you've probably not got that many yeah no we only have literally about three or four healers that take the battlefield yeah. i think there's only two the last bit because there was a smaller number of us yeah yeah well, i think well, there was only two yeah but um well, yeah there's, there's normally only a small handful of us well one of you sorted me out when i was i was like i had my leg cleaved and there was a whole there was a whole thing uh one, one of uh one of you <laughs> one of your physics uh t tied my kneecap outside of my leg and it was, it was like it was like i'm Amazing. pretty i'm not I'm entirely sure that's supposed to be there i don't know where it goes better go see a human physic when you get out and i'm just like oh yeah it's fine <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like he'll be fine you know there's more people coming right I'm like, I need to bend it was quite a surreal it was it was probably it was probably yeah it was one of the, i mean that battle was grueling and there was like loads of shit going on uh but that that was definitely one of the highlights i i do remember trying to give um because because there was I I spoke to uh, an orc about the Iron Tides mm -hmm. and I was like right okay because we were talking about our shields and they went all oh, right yeah the, the this is the Iron Tide symbol and I'm like oh, okay mm -hmm. I'll call it if you really want to know how to fight with a shield I will show you how to do it and I'm like oh, okay but I knew we were fighting with you all like the next day I'm like I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. okay try and clock that shield and try and give some give you some shit. yeah our shield is quite unique it's um yeah. the way that we use it like uh when you're fighting with more against more than one person it's really helpful for keeping one of them a distance and stuff like that because you can just hold your arm out like that with your shield on it yeah and don't even do anything with that arm they just can't get to you because yeah. you're holding it. and then you can just fight and then once that one's taken care of you can then focus on the other one yeah so it's it's really a unique shield to fight with but um and it's the first time i've ever used a shield mm -hmm. i don't normally fight with one i actually find the iron tide shield easier to use than the traditional shield yeah just because of the way it is plus because i'm so short if i go like that with mine i could it almost covers me head to toe really <laughs> just yeah it's, see this, <laughs> this poking over the top of it <laughs> it's, it's definitely it's definitely a bit of game that i i, I want to come and get from you all uh next year 100 percent. i definitely want to mm -hmm. come and come and have a look but yeah that that moment i i i, 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 I spotted the iron tide shield and i was like oh i'm just gonna give them some crap because there was like basically there was a load of there was a load of foliage right and it was it wasn't dangerous to go through but the, the ref was was stood on it and he was like he was like you can go through it just like just be careful and there was a load of druge on the other side and there was the iron tide just kind of hanging out and i was just like come on i'll race you and your group were just like no we are not running through that nope. again probably because <laughs> <probably 'cause laughs> the peripheral vision thing uh but anyway i just me being me we I was don't just run like, on battlefield <laughs> <laughs> nope. me being me i was just like ah, and i just went through it and that's where i got cleaved and that's where one yeah. of your physics that's when one of your physics came in into the brush and had to like do my but we were quite safe because no one was coming in so oh, it, it was hilarious though the way you were like come on i'll race you i thought you were an iron tide and you ran through cleave down and well, then I mean, one I, came up with i'll help you i mean i, I panicked <laughs> a lot of druge and then they cleave then they cleave but the, the cool thing about that was the fact that all our forces had gone but the but the Imperial oh, yeah. Orcs were hanging around, and that was actually... Yeah, it was, just, it was just us and the Imperial Orcs, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we don't <laughs> run on the battlefield. We're um, a slow-moving tide on the battlefield. Yeah. Because we're just so heavy with all the kit that I wear. Like, because I'm a healer, I don't have uh, hero points or that kind of stuff, which all the irons I do. So we're a, um, a fighting group. Mm hmm our main thing is um, we're a military unit. We're a squaddy group. Yeah. And we have a few what we call ancillary roles. So like healers and magic users. And I'm one of them. So I'm the healer. I'm the only phys physic in the um, surgeon in the group. Um, but I still need to keep up with my boys mm -hmm. that are all wearing heavy armor and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm also wearing armor and I've got chain mail and then I've got um, like, so it can protect me. Then I've got my le leather armor over the top of that. And then I've got my waistcoat and I have my shield slung over my back so I can put my hands free for if I need to um, physic people. And then I can just pull my shield if I need to use it. So, um, and god damn is it heavy and we're like oh. huffing and puffing as we're walking along so yeah we don't run <laughs> no no it's, yeah, it's no some, surprise some young dornish comes over going i'll race you <laughs> well, go on then no. go off you go. <laughs> i wouldn't have it any other way god godric definitely wouldn't have it any other way haha -ha! no, no, <laughs> yeah yeah i like how you say you had a really good experience with the orc physic because oh. i try and also make it a bit different oh, when i so physic funny. yeah it was so, so i great. have um old-fashioned um like knitting needles and mm -hmm. old-fashioned sewing needles which are made out of bone or really fat Amazing. so when i'm physicking a human i'm like 
orc skin's really thick, so this needle's fat. It's probably yeah. going to hurt you, so uh, deal with it. And yeah. then I just dive in, and I'm just like, so in the way. <laughs> it's, it is great, because it just gives you that. Again, especially because, like, you can be your character. There's, su there's such a contrast yeah. between what's going on and the physic was over me, and she was like, oh, yeah, she's like, she's like oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to spit on it now, and I'm just like... Okay, you sh are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes, yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, ah! Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I, I think that's how it goes. It gave me like real Dr. Zoybird vibes from like Futurama, having no idea what. <laughs> like, I, I don't know human anatomy that well. I think that's where the kneecap goes, but you might you might want to get it checked out mm. when you get back. <laughs> yeah, it is it's very much fun healing a human compared to healing orcs. Yeah, I bet. So here's, here's a combat question then that I'm I'm curious about. Like, is it a pain in the ass when Imperials are... Well, okay, well, here's a better question. How often do you get hit from, like, friendly fire? Oh, all the time. Yeah, all the time. All the time. <laughs> just... All the time. I, yeah, think would... yeah. <laughs> I think it would drive yeah. me mad because I was just like... <laughs> yeah, it, it, but, we, it, but every single Imperial Orc will react. We won't react violently, mm -hmm. but we do get all up in the grill of the person who's attacking one yeah. of ours. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So obviously we won't get because we're a law abiding. We won't get physical with them, but we will be like, "What the hell do you think you're doing? Yeah. How, how racist are you? Do you think we all look the same? Does he look like a, a barbarian? Can't you see the wraps on his wrist? Can't you see the wraps on his neck? Or you know, what about this one there? Look what they're wearing. Yeah. Why and why do you think she's what well, we're standing with us and she's wearing that colours? Yeah. But but that, but, that, but this is the thing. The, the thing is because you, what you're saying there, and obviously we're, we're laughing about it, but it's also true. You know, so you're like. Like vigilance is a virtue, you know, and and like being aware of what's going on. Uh, so yeah, like you're perfectly within your right to be like, what the hell? And it's again, it's good game, isn't it? Cause yeah, yeah. You've you've turned an annoyance like, oh god, the, I'm on your side. And you've turned that into a, you know, what? Do you an amazing mean? role play opportunity to show them how different you actually are and make sure they never make that yeah. mistake again. <laughs> yeah, like we point out the wraps. Yeah. Because barbarians don't wear wraps. Barbarian, that's, that's one of the ways you can spot an Imperial Orc. Barbarians oh, okay. don't wear wraps because they were never in shackles. Ah, so right. even okay. like, I, I personally, Flax doesn't have obviously scars on her wrists and her necks, but every Orc wears it because it's a sign of respect for the what our ancestors fought for. Uh, okay, okay. You know, so we all wear them and only Imperial Orcs wear them because it was only Imperial Orcs that were slaves. Mm -hmm. So no barbarian orcs will be wearing wraps yeah. and stuff like that. So that's one of the that's one of the things we say. Like, can you not see the wraps that they're wearing? Yeah. What does that look like around their neck and around their wrists? Yeah. Do you see them ones in green running around and wearing wraps? No. So, and this one's wearing yellow or red. Does it look like they're wearing? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's so funny. I mean, it did like it came with a little bit of anxiety because this is the first like E four was the first time. Like as players, we had had fought alongside the Imperial Orcs, so yeah, I did have a thing of like, and especially since you folk were like, "Oh, we're we're heading out first and I'm like, "I thought we went out first, and I'm like, "Oh no, what if we go into the woods and then all we see is orcs, you know <laughs> like oh, uh, no. i I did know about the raps, and I did this the wrong way. I was like, okay, there's only like twenty of them. I can remember their faces, and I'm like, okay, no, like so I know those shields, know these faces, I know their face, right, okay, no, I've got this, I'm not gonna make a mistake, and then we're out, and everyone's running, and I'm like. Who do I hit? <laughs> <Yeah, Austin. laughs> Especially when we ended up looped around behind a load of the druids. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I had that happen to me. I ended up behind enemy lines on my own because we were running from a donut. We all got stuck in a donut. Yeah. And um, and I got out of that. And that's where Iron Tide Wessex died. And one of my other Iron Tide died there as well. But I managed to leg it out. And I was at the, everyone in the donut. It was just me. And I ran behind enemy lines. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm in <laughs> danger. Right, and you got the other orc, like the the enemy orcs. I can't remember who we were fighting at that event. And then like, they just looked over. They just looked at me, and then, and then they're like, but you can see it in their face. They're like, I don't remember this one, but they don't want to question it. So I'm trying to edge closer to the front, like make my way through them, so I can then just leg it. And one of the humans turned around and went, "Is this one of ours?" And I just went, <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, off we go. I just yeah. It. Bye. Yeah, because I was, I was, I was just. I'm glad you brought that because I was actually just about to ask you whether it's like it works the other way around because you could be yeah. like, oh, what you don't know the difference between an orc, and then you're like, I, I was going to ask you, yeah, do you ever take advantage <laughs> of the fact that you can just be like, when you were fighting orc barbarians, I can just be like, oh, I'm just going to sidle along here, and then ha, ah, <laughs> gotcha. It's a bit harder for me because mm. because of my kit, I am very clearly Imperial Orc, Distinct. and I've got the Iron Tide yeah. Shield on my back, and everyone everyone knows the Iron Tide Shields, and especially you know like with the Orcs. Mm. And if I'm with a bunch of other Orcs that don't have that shield, it, they're going to start like I said taking a double and taking a few seconds to look, and they're like, yeah. And, and it's eventually one of them asks the question. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. That's I, I bet it depends on what like how lucky you are and what group because yeah the, you you could just like show up to like a little kind of uh group of brand new players that just just they just go oh oh this is our first time we're in wintermark and let's put a mask on and you just you could just walk by them and they're just oh <laughs> that must be an elite orc or something yeah. unit or something you just walk yeah. by them you shouldn't give them some orders <laughs> see what happens <laughs> I like that, <couldn't> I? <laughs> There have been times where we've managed to infiltrate behind enemy lines to get downed orcs. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've managed to just um, just walk behind there, and just pick up the orcs and walk out. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, I think w w there was one moment in at E4 when we were fighting alongside you that I felt terrible because, again, I'm not used to uh, seeing you on the battlefield, and I'm like, oh yeah, we'll move our lines back, and as soon as I thought all our allies were clear. I like we move back, and then I'm like, then you see an imperial orc like go, oh no, and they're like <laughs> swept behind the line. You're like, oh my god, I feel terrible. But I was like, I just I, I ran out of line, um, and I <laughs> didn't re didn't realize they were on our side. Yeah, it's, it's hectic that's, in there. That is the only time we do ever go to military council or complain that some orcs have died because of human stupidity, yeah. and that's because when they've made where they're fighting alongside them and then suddenly there we are on our own yeah yeah when something like that happens and and then orcs needlessly die like imperial orcs needlessly yeah. die that's the only time we would go to a military council and go what the fuck kind yeah. of thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, if we died like like 84 loads of people died it wasn't just imperial orcs and it wasn't yeah. due to stupidity it was just a hard fight <sighs> that it, it was it was really hard yeah, yeah. So that what, was... yeah. What, what what did you think because we, we spoke because this is a whole thing that we've spoken to a lot of people about about that that battle because we've spoken to people that monstered on the other side mm -hmm. and even pretty much everyone we've spoken to that have monstered as well has said that the the the, the crew side got a bit out of hand. Like it was like they were playing so uh, aggressively and untrue. Yeah. Like it was just absolute chaos. You know. Yeah, from a player perspective, mm -hmm. it did seem a bit um, harsh. Yeah. But there might be reasons for that. Yeah. Because everything that happens in the battlefields. There are skirmishes that can impact what happens on the battlefield. So for yeah. all we know, there has been a, a skirmish for a nation that we don't know about that went and did something which mm. impacted and gave a slight advantage to the Druze, which allowed them to have extra things on that battlefield that we don't know about. Yeah, so I, yeah. it might have felt uh, a bit unbalanced, but whether that was actually the case or whether something had made it like that, yeah. we don't know. So, yeah, I, I do yeah. know that, yeah, pretty much I think every <laughs> every skirmish that was supposed to help that failed. Uh, we were on yeah. one of them that like well it, it wasn't anything to do with the battle it was it was to kill a winter herald or something that was supposed to save an army and we failed to do that but i do i think that the was it the was it the wraiths or, or the, the the tormented souls or something were tormented souls and yeah, then the miasma it, oh no i think the, the skirmishes well. that were getting rid of the miasma pillars worked but i think they only got one i think i don't oh, know did they only get one yeah yeah, mm. but no, I, I I know what you mean. <laughs> so Kelly, what what was the? Because uh, I'm curious. What so at E E three, the Imperial Orcs didn't show up to the the, the battle. Yeah. What was what what was that all about? Like out of character. Like, what was what was that? I all know about? what happened. I uh -huh. wasn't at E three. I had COVID. Ah right. Okay. Um, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Thanks to Chris and the little shit was clear and yeah. he got to go to the event, even though he yeah. gave me COVID. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, but I did hear what happened and I do know why we didn't take the battle, but we were protesting against uh, slavery. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
it was all a in character decision. It was mm-hmm. all in character role play. So it, all of the Imperial Orcs took to the battlefield as monsters the day before, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then we didn't take to the battlefield as players, which you're allowed to do. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. not allowed to do it the other way. You can't go as players and then not go as a monster. But if mm-hmm. you go as monster and then choose not to play, that's your choice. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, and we almost unanimously as a nation decided not to take the battlefield because we were protesting against slavery mm-hmm. and it worked Yeah, because they, um, yeah. they set all their slaves free and I, I believe they outlawed it. And um, because they wanted the empire to fight with them and they didn't want the fact that they had slaves to cause the tension within the empire with the Imperial Orcs. So they stopped it. Nice. So it worked. Nice. Yeah. So that, that was one of the other barbarian nations, right? That we're, Mm. I can't remember which because I wasn't there at E3. Yeah. It's not all like that on my head, but um, yeah, I do remember. It was honestly I can't remember which one it was, but uh, yeah, it was one of them. Something. Yeah, I, so yeah, because I think we're in talk. I don't know. I'm not into the political game that much. I don't, I don't really touch the higher game too much. <laughs> might might get into the higher <laughs> game at some point, but it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but what was cool about it was that, like, like game balance wise, I don't think it made like a huge difference to that battle that you didn't show up but is the fact that they got the imperials got absolutely trounced that day and the imperial orcs didn't show up even though it was only they were only down like you know 15 people or something but it just we normally take about 45 people to the battlefield oh wow yeah okay well it might make a difference 45 50 yeah Yeah. Yeah. last event when we took 25 was small for small. us okay yeah, yeah. also it might, it might have made a difference but it was I it was it probably would have yeah yeah um but no it was it they kind of added to that it was it was really cool drama it was like a cool it was quite a cool like tension in, yeah <laughs> it's created okay. some really good role play especially with the marches for instance because yes i heard about some of them yeah <laughs> the imperial orcs have very tight knit connections with the marches mm-hmm. um and um so like for my my adopted daughter is staying in, in character she's staying with um some with one of uh like my battle sister in yeah. the marches mm-hmm. um rosie rosie sweetwater so mm-hmm. little han is is currently staying with rosie sweetwater nice. so um, and we've got really strong strong connections in fact one of the things that i wear on my war skirt as i told you we kept given loads of stuff yeah is something from general flowers that used to be um in the marches as well mm-hmm. um so yeah so we've got really str- and, Loads of other um, Imperial Orcs have got connections with other marchers as well. We've yeah. all got really strong connections with them. But at that event, a bunch of new marchers who don't know the history between us um, and their new Egregore decided to come and rough music us, <laughs> um, which is what they do when they don't agree with something. That's, that's right. But other marchers came to stop them. And then we had um, some winter markers come and deny them access to our camp <laughs> so the orcs are just like what okay. is this <laughs> so we've got winter markers protecting our camp from the marchers mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was written re- yeah so it was the dunnings the dunnings came to do it so the dunnings came and told told the marchers to just clear off and get they away were, yeah yeah and then, then when they went back to tell the rest of the marchers what they'd done the rest of the marchers are like are oh, you fucking stupid what do you think you were doing and and then they had like I don't know what they call it. We call it lands meet when we all meet up to have a, a, a nation oh, chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we learned this the other day. Uh, uh, muster? Is it muster? Is, it muster? Is that what they call yeah, it? I think, some, yeah. I think it was muster. Muster, yeah. Yeah, Maz yeah. was telling us about it, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, they were having their muster and then some some of the veteran um, marchers who have it, their characters have connections with our characters, so they've lived through it all, were like, what the hell do you think you're doing? Um, like... None of the new players know about the Sunhammers. The Sunhammers were a banner that in the Imperial Orcs a couple of years ago to a man got wiped out because they were protecting the lines for the marchers so the marchers could retreat off the battlefield. Oh, man. Every single Sunhammer died. Every single one of them died. Wow. Uh, Literally a whole banner wiped out so the marchers could clear off the battlefield. So, and one of, and some of the marchers are still alive. So when yeah. they came back to the um, the camp and they were like, oh, yeah, we did this all proud of themselves. They're like, are you stupid? Do you realise what they've done for us? Yeah. And they don't have multiple lives. They can't go through the labyrinth and come back again. They have one life yeah. and they use that one life to make sure we could get through and off the battlefield and we could stay alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 well, actually, yeah. since you brought that up, <laughs> Kelly, what so... Um, 
yeah so why don't you explain the whole like labyrinth and the whole deal with the orcs and the afterlife and the differences there oh uh, yeah our one life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um so obviously humans, you've got the, the labyrinth, you die, yeah. you wake your way through the labyrinth and then you get reborn again. Um, same soul and you won't have the same personality and the same memories, but it is the same soul and you can do, I, I don't know what it, where you get to relive your past life. Like reincarnation type thing, yeah. Yeah, you get to see, you get to see there's some, is it a spell oh, or a potion oh, or oh, something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah? yeah where you, you, get to, mm-hmm. you get to experience. So yeah. there's where we, we don't get that. We get one life. Mm-hmm. And then when we die, we our soul makes its way to the shores of the abyss. Mm-hmm. And then in, after an indeterminate amount of time, it's different for every orc, they start the journey across the abyss. They start the leap across the abyss. Mm-hmm. So um, if there's two ways to get across the abyss. Either you can be strong enough to do it yourself off of your own back. And um, and that strength comes from the deeds that you did in life. So if you've done something momentous in life and you did something to benefit the Imperial Orcs or the Empire, yeah. for, for us, for Imperial Orcs, we could do something that benefits the Empire um, that will give you the strength to make it across the abyss on your own. And if people talk about you after you've died, they continue telling your story that feeds that strength for you to get over there. Mm-hmm. And the other way is if um, you've done something again, momentous in life, but maybe not as, as in momentous, but the ancestors think it was the ancestors, the ones that have already made it across the abyss can reach over and, and pull you across and help you okay. get across oh, the wow. abyss. Yeah. So they're, they're the, like the two ways you can get across the abyss um, and become an ancestor yourself. And then when you become an ancestor, you can talk to Imperial Orcs that are alive. Uh, you can only talk to blood relatives um, or people you actually knew in life. Okay. So if our entire flax dies, any Imperial Orc that hasn't met her won't ever be able to hear her. But only and any of her blood relatives will be able to. Oh. So even if like a blood relative is born two hundred years from now, that blood relative would be able to hear Iron Tide Flax. If you don't make it across the abyss and you fall in, you fall into oblivion. Your soul is destroyed and you are no more. Oof. So Oof. literally, an orc dying and giving up their life for a human that's to a survive, deal. yeah, is yeah. Um, one life. That's a one deal. life, and <laughs> and you could be just be gone out of out of existence your soul ripped apart into oblivion no longer exists anymore yeah that yeah that's yeah like you said that makes the sacrifice that's mm-hmm. very it's very similar it's like the opposite way around sort of because that's like how it is in like lord of the rings where like the the, the elves are immortal mm. but they don't get to go to an afterlife so when the elves sacrifice themselves for humans it's more tragic because they haven't been given the gift of afterlife yeah. they've literally given their one immortal life to that so how, how does that how, how do you pass around the 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 religion side of the game like what's what's the attitude to what because the way is like a quite a unifying thing about the empire right so is that yeah is that quite it a complicated did. part of the game for the imperial orcs to maneuver around it was a, a, until a couple of years ago when um a lot of our preachers and our shamans worked to get it put into doctrine that it was recognised that for orcs, because it used to be illegal for us to talk about our, not religion, but our, because um, it's not even a belief, it's fact. Yeah. We, yeah. we, 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 only, we do only have one life yeah. and we do have ancestors. Yeah. It's, we have ancestors. There's no denying that. Mm-hmm. They're there screaming in our heads. Yeah. But we could never really talk to humans that much about it because it was like heresy right yeah so yeah. um and it was always like you know you must follow the way the, and the virtue and that's the only only way that there is and um if you don't follow the way and if we ever talked about the fact that we don't have to follow the way in order to cross the abyss it's heresy and you can be executed for it mm-hmm. so we were still kind of um suppressed in a way yeah even though we had our freedom we we're still kind of suppressed but our preachers and our shamans worked against that and it was put into, um, I, I think, doctrine called for the religious game. Yeah, okay, yeah, doctrine, um, it sounds right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds right, shrug. I, I don't do the, the religious game, <laughs> no. but whatever it is they, they, they do, they put it in play that, um, and it was recognised as fact that the orcs don't have to follow the way in order to cross the abyss. It helps them, so imperial orcs, it, following the way can help you cross the abyss this is what humans think that yeah. it can help us cross the abyss but it's not the only way for us to cross the abyss 
Yeah. And again, that's fact because none of the barbarians follow the way, yet they're ancestors. So it's very clear that it's fact, that it's not the the way isn't the only way for us to get across the abyss. Yeah. So now it's not illegal for us to talk about it. And now we can freely talk about how mm -hmm. the abyss is and what we need to do to cross it and um, and our stories that can get us across there and the strength that can get us across and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I so, yeah, I stumbled across like on my like quest for love stories. I stumbled across the like story basically the stories of our last empress and i heard some like like crazy because it was it's so it was so complicated way with my head a lot of it but i did know that it was something like th the way she disappeared it was something to do with wanting to get the the something about the afterlife <laughs> and the orcs i think she did she not want to like uh was she not upset that her citizens couldn't go through the labyrinth or something and I think um there was some crazy um, magic going on yeah, there was stuff going on, and um, I'm not exactly sure how what happened. Yeah, yeah. With it, I do know it was done, so it it was final. There was no coming back from what happened to her. Yeah, and but so I kind of bring that up to kind of uh, kind of ask: Is that is because it sounds like like the Imperial Orcs are very proud of that that the fact that they can speak their ancestors and the fact that yeah, that mm -hmm. most of them are barbarians, but are do they want to? go through the labyrinth or not or is that a point of contention we can't talk to our ancestors so let's just get um we cannot communicate with them we can mm. hear them yeah oh, right okay so you can so it's one way <laughs> yes it's a one way it's a one way yes. microphone oh no yes right, okay. so they're constantly yabbering in our ears uh -huh. and they get louder the more the more intense emotion we feel um right the, the weaker the barrier comes that we we put up because they're obviously they're constantly chattering and um and yeah the more emotion we feel the more the weaker that barrier gets and the louder they get in our in our heads and the more we, we get influenced by their feelings mm -hmm. which reflects on you know i told you about how every one of the imperial orcs is a descendant of a of a barbarian yeah, tribe. yeah so it affects how we um how we act depending on what ancestors we're hearing um so and you know the pit for us is um it's a lot of people are oh yeah it's just like a wrestling pit that's going fight blah 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 but that's a, that's like it's a place of um religion for us okay yeah it's actually it's very sacred and it's very um like um spiritual that pit is a spiritual place for us because as soon as we enter that pit the ancestors get extremely loud in our in our head so if we if we want guidance and we want to hear um what our ancestors can offer us if we're if we come across a dilemma and we're not sure what what well, there's two paths ahead of us. We don't know what to take. You'll often see um, orcs just sat in the pit, just sat there because they're listening to the ancestors to try and help them decide what path to take yeah. because we can hear them more in there. And when we're fighting as well, so when we're on the battlefield, the ancestors are very, very loud in our ears because we're a militaristic race. When we're fighting, they're very like, that, that's what we're made for. So yeah. the ancestors are screaming us on. They're like, yes, go and do this. <laughs> so, yes. so a fighting pit is a very spiritual place for us because we're in there, you're fighting, the ancestors are screaming. You can hear them louder in there anyway. It's even yeah. doubly louder while you're in there. So yeah, the fighting pit is a spiritual place for us. But going back to the Empress and what happened with her, uh -huh. I do have. I don't want to talk too much about it. The reason like, because I yeah. have theories about yeah. what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and where she went to. And, and it reflects to some stuff that's actually going on in game at the moment. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. it was a fascinating piece of game to, to stumble upon. Because I was looking for, I won't get too much into it, but I, I, I was looking for a leagueish love love story. And because she, she was originally from the league. So they, they sent me over because the league didn't want to tell me anything about anything, you know, unless I wanted to pay to, you know, for an <laughs> escort. But anyway, they, they sent me, I eventually spoke to someone who sent me over to Barushka because uh, the Empress's level was Barushkan. And then I, yeah, I heard all about, the, <laughs> about this. And they didn't go, they obviously, I learned more about their relationship than mm. what actually happened. But it was interesting as a character because because after the fact i would be like oh yeah you know this is, was my experience and then like meta people were saying oh no this happened this happened i'm like well no to my character i was told that this happened and it is so different from what other characters have said has happened which i yeah. think is really cool i think it's a real cool yeah so i know she went on a dream something to do with the dreams 
yeah 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 and they went to get they went together this was that's why so yeah, yeah her and her, her lover mm. went off together and it was yeah because she was and it was because it, the, the the importance of obviously that that part of it the imperial orc part of it was the fact that yeah she was an empress that basically just you know sacrificed herself for her citizens you know mm -hmm. and and the important and why it was so important and uh, yeah yeah, I I've got to admit, I, like I said, I don't really delve much into that that side of the game. That's way too high for me. That type of game. But going back to your question, you asked about the labyrinth or the abyss. Yes. Do we uh, want to go through the labyrinth? Um, I mean, it, as a nation, no. There might be the Imperial Orcs uh, and a couple. I mean, I do know off the top of my, I'm not going to name them, but there is one Imperial Orc which mm. we call a human lover, which like they want to be a human. That's how the, you know they're they're so pro human. <laughs> And 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 the way is the only way kind of thing. It's like they've been like they've been drinking the Kool Aid, yeah. <laughs> but you know that's that's an anomaly, anomaly yeah. um, which is great role play. I'm not it saying is. what they're doing yeah. is wrong. It it, it's <laughs> great, but um, like as a nation, no, we want to cross the abyss. We don't. The labyrinth is for humans. Yeah. We yeah. respect that you have the labyrinth, but that's your thing. Yeah. And yeah. our thing is is the abyss, and and the fact that that's now recognised and treated as equal as a labyrinth we're content with that yeah you yeah. know now that we can talk about it without being told that it's heresy mm -hmm. it's fine with us we're, we're now content that we can practice our spirituality without being punished for it yeah and speak of your your ancestors yeah. and things like that without actually getting you know <laughs> in any, yeah. any issue it's cool yeah. that you can you can play around with those things in game isn't it as well especially if like you know if, if the game drops you in this situation where you're like okay well you know you you this is the brief you're you're free slaves you've been here for this many years um but currently you're you know th this this part of your your afterlife and this is what happens is currently heresy like go do what you want with it and that's a cool mm -hmm. little game because then it's like you continuing the thread oh we have land now then can we please talk about our ancestors and that yeah. gives people so oh, much game we have land now i was my character was around for that i'm literally wearing like, like the scar sins t-shirt <laughs> so um that was one of the most touching experiences I've had. Really? In, I was genuinely crying. Um, so it, it happened over the span of uh, two events. Okay, so yeah. there was one, one event where the winter markers gave up the land. Mm -hmm. And then the next event, we, when it was then given to us. And so and I was there for both events. And just the feels when we were standing in the Senate and it was given up. And then again, the next event when then it was then given to us, it so was just. Can you put it in a nutshell? Like, can you do a? Can you put it in a nutshell? What actually happened for you to to get that land? Well, it had to be ratified by um, someone on the throne, mm -hmm. and we never had anyone on the throne, so it was intentional that when Empire started, there was no one on the throne, yeah. and it would always be it's a political game. So you do your political stuff to, like it's happening right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Every, every, yeah. So it was that. And that went on for years, absolute years without someone on the throne. <sighs> and the winter markers wanted to gift. So, so we couldn't get be given land because land can only be given by someone on the throne. Yes. Right. So the Imperial Orcs were just resigned to not having land for a long time. But then it was discovered a, a scroll which was written by the the previous um, um I don't know if it was the previous one or the one before I'm not exactly okay. sure which one it yeah. was but one of the previous throne occupants as a gift to the empire uh, the imperial orcs for something that we did for them wrote out saying that that they ratify anything that that we would we want okay yeah yeah. And we had this scroll, which would, even though there was no one on the throne, the previous um, person on the throne had seen to it that whatever the Imperial Orcs decided to use it on, we could use it on. So when that was found, the Wintermarker said, we will give you Scarsind. Nice. And we will give up Scarsind for you. And we were like, you what? <laughs> 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 you what now? <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That, that's... It's just so beautiful to have yeah. that. It's just honestly speechless because what can you say to that for 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 a, a nation where we never had our own land? It become ingrained with us that we just lived on, on carts. Mm -hmm. So in between events where all of the other nations were going back to their homeland, 
we just go back to our baggage train <laughs> and go back to the um to where the the fight was. Yeah. So you know wherever the armies went in between yeah. events, that's, that's where, we where the yeah. that's where the Imperial Orcs lived. Yeah. So um even our baggage trains were all military people because they lived just behind a battle line. Yeah. That yeah. was their home. So um yeah to get given that and then you you honestly I was crying with yeah, so much that's, happiness. That's so cool though. That that really is. And the the thing is that I guess it's just like it doesn't end there because like I, I imagine just like every I mean we're playing a game called Empire and what do empires do? They expand, right? So mm -hmm. that's the thing, you know, the Imperial Oaks have that land and then it's like you know, we could do some more land now. <laughs> we could do some more stuff. Well to be fair, we're not greedy and no. we did always say that um because it was originally the very the first virgin territory that the empire takes over the imperial orcs would take and yeah. and it needs to be virgin not land that the empire used to previously hold that we lost and then won again mm -hmm. virgin territory that the empire had never held before yeah. would be given to us as our first homeland yeah. then obviously we've been given scarcing but we've always maintained that when the first virgin land comes that we would get it and we would give scarcing back yeah okay you know that that's what we've been saying and we always that we would give it back improved give it back better than when, when we yeah. we got it and um you know i mentioned earlier about the amount of hats that are in the nation yes yeah the amount of sinecures that we've built on that land uh -huh. is mental <laughs> absolutely mental all down to one person and it was just so when we give that you know I say when it depends if we ever get virgin land and stuff like that it could be 10 years from now yeah. or, or it might never happen, might never happen so, yeah. Uh, yeah if when we give that land back it's going to be better than when we gave it because there's so many syndicates there and then we would then move to the virgin territory and make that our, our new home oh that 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 would be juicy game though wouldn't it that'll be that'll be juicy game because i bet there will be people going oh, we, we quite like fancy that one or there might be an imperial orcs that are like actually no i quite like it here in scarson yeah for all we know none of the orcs that are alive when um when we got given scarson will still be alive when that happens yeah, and no one might even yeah. remember and, and some winter market be like oh yeah well you did say you give it back and you're gonna be like <laughs> no well we never kicked out any winter markers when we were given the land mm -hmm. we always um as a nation in character we said if there are any winter markers that want to stay in scarcins they can they're, they're, this, this yeah. was this was your home yeah. so there are still npc winter markers that um that still live there yeah because what's what what would i'm not gonna ask you like the exact population but like it, in in general what it, is the are the imperial orcs in world are, are they are, are they like physically a small population of a nation or something or is it yeah we're not we're not huge no, most no. of our most of our population well, it might not be the, the case anymore but it used to be most of them were in the army yeah, yeah. yeah. um but obviously all the baggage train then settled in Scarsind yeah. and but we've been slowly been taking in more tribes yeah. and um and these tribes um their history isn't militaristic so they've been becoming our farmers mm -hmm. and uh herbalists and uh you know and all that kind of stuff so and yeah. actually being able to build up the nation and, yeah and, build and these sinecures yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like in, in, in like the law is like obviously if they're slaves do, do they you know if they're if they're ex-slaves has over time is it in the law that yeah people have literally migrated or like orcs have literally migrated across the empire to move to Scarsian if they were on far flung parts um uh, imperial orcs mm -hmm. all imperial orcs lived on the battlefield with before we got Scarsian mm -hmm. they weren't settled anywhere yeah. every single imperial orc was part of the baggage train or yeah. part of the army yeah. so there wasn't any orcs all over the nation to all come and can, right. okay. um, yeah. come to Scarsian um because that's just not what, how, how it was the ones that have been joining us since we've got Scarsian the ones that were never part of the empire you know that's been um, like yeah. the forest orcs and, and stuff like that have, yeah. have slowly been joining the empire and they've joined the imperial orcs and then they've settled and they've brought new skills to the imperial orcs ah, that's okay. so cool that's so cool yeah yeah i i think it's you know what i'd like like you mentioned the marches earlier and how like certain players know you know that they, they know that story of what happened or they were actually there and some don't uh i found it because i tried to go into the system like pretty blind because i kind of i got the sense that that was what the system was about like the, the best way to learn something is through role play um you know it's a role playing game right and the the Everything that I've heard about the Imperial Orcs in character 
has been positive, right? So and it's it's funny to to obviously you walk up and it's fun role play because you just like because Godric does not have a issue with uh, the Imperial Orcs whatsoever because he's only heard his uh, the troubadours that he knows telling uh, telling the battles of Scarskin and, and things like that where the like the yeah. Imperial Orcs and the Dornish stood side by side and there was a whole respect thing and. Uh, you know, they, they, they basically kick the Odin's ass. And so that's the stories he knows. So he has this view and it's, it's amazing in game when you come across someone else and they're like, oh yeah, that person doesn't like the Imperial Orcs. And you're just like, why? And that that's such a cool thing to do is to like let your, don't come in with like opinions from the wiki, come in and let the role play kind of mm -hmm. dictate what your opinions on it. Yeah. That's yeah. going to give you a good game, whether it's right or wrong, you know? Yeah, exactly. Even if it's wrong, you can learn in in character. Like I did the same as you. I purposely never read up on magic at all because my character isn't um, doesn't do magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a physics. So I read everything about the medical side of everything. So I like my character knew every. I knew everything about that. But I purposely went in blind about magic, about military stuff, about the Eternals, so I could learn in game. Mm -hmm. So when people are talking to me and they're like, "Oh, what is this?" and I'm like what is that i don't know what it is yeah and i, I yeah. genuinely don't know no. that's yeah so my cool reaction idea. is genuine flax's reaction is yeah. genuinely <laughs> my reaction because i have no idea about all that type of the game yeah <laughs> that's yeah exactly i mean what what drew you to the medical side of it and to the the physics side of the game um i played a <sighs> a goblin shocker <laughs> but a local lot <laughs> and nice. um yeah and i played an apothecary there so and and I have loads of apothecary kit, loads of it. So many nice. bottles and tables and like hidden tables with hidden compartments and stuff like that. And I wanted to reuse all of that kit when I came to Empire. So I was just looking and I saw physic on there, and I'm like, I've got a lot of kit that I can reuse for, for that. So that's why I went down uh, that route. And it just it gives you a lot of game interacting with people because on a battlefield it doesn't matter if as soon as I hear the word physic or healer. I don't care who I'm healing. I'm there on my knees healing nice. them. Yeah. So I get a lot of um, role play with other nations. And I've had a lot of people come and give. I had one at the, um, this year. This amazing gift that was given to me by a marcher. Because I healed an, um, like his friend, someone from um, what we call Banner. I think they, they call it Steading, maybe. I might be making it up. I don't know what they call it in the marchers. Oh, the marchers. Yeah, the Steading's a Navari. Uh, oh, is, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, man. I can't, I can't I remember. Don't know, yeah, I can't but remember. we know what we're talking about, yeah. Well, so, yeah. marchers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they ran away from their houses. They don't need houses. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as a thank you, he came and gave me, um, in character, his, his um, parents' physics set. And he actually gave me a LARP safe in a leather roll oh. physics set. And it was absolutely amazing. That so and cool. all of that from me helping and physicking someone. So it, 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 I think it really opens up a lot of game for me to just go up to random strangers and heal them. Because yeah. the amount of times I've got them coming back to camp and saying thank you for healing me. Plus, I have what's called um, story bandages. So, it, you know, about our items of worth. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, as a physic, my items of worth are bandages. Uh -huh. So I have my story bandages. Now, not all of my bandages are story bandages, just some of them. And what it is I've written on them is I've put name, mm -hmm. injury, and um, what happened. Oh. And then there's lines for people to fill it out. So I'll bandage someone up with them. And then it says return to Iron Tide Flax on the bandage. So they fill out their name, what injury they had, how they got it. And then they come and return the banshee back to me. Oh, that's that's such oh, that's a good so idea cool. <laughs> because that yeah. yeah that that gives you like double game because you do the thing and then it gives the person when they come yeah. on the battlefield the opportunity if they want to to be like oh I'll I'll head over to yeah. the Iron Tides and and say thank you to the you know thank you to the physic mm -hmm. and return the bandage. That's, yeah, that's really that's, cool. That's amazing. Yeah, and each bandage has three sections, so I can it can go with the three stories on it, and then once it's full up. So it, they might, I, I mean, I've lost some of them. They haven't ever come back. Well, yeah, but, yeah, happens, yeah, yeah. But eventually, when I do get one back where all the three of them are tied, I tie it to my war skirt. So on the back of my war skirt, I have my ba my story bandages hanging off of it. Nice. So they've gone that's, around saving people. That's such that's, a good idea. That, oh, no, it really is. That's so cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I love physics in general because unfortunately I'm just, yeah, I'm just always at the at the front. And <laughs> I feel I feel bad, honestly, that I think it was, I think yeah, I think it was E4. E3 was bad as well, but E4 I felt particularly bad because 
the physics, I think I like just used just all the nation's potions, you know, and just everything because it was just like constantly back at the front. And I felt bad every time I took too many hits in too quick a succession because I'm just like, crap, I've just used all the resources from the Rinse healers. And, and now I have to go back <laughs> and do it. Hello, Megan. <laughs> it don't have to use resources to heal you. So um, no, no, a couple no. of years yeah. ago, I put a post up on Facebook which outlined it all. And every, every few years, I, I normally repost it. So new people that i knew can see it because oh, it's yeah. on yeah, it's on the wiki that if um like if you use a herb mm-hmm. i can't remember off the top of my head now how long it takes uh, 30 seconds it may be if you use a herb so 30 okay. seconds of role play with the herb and and you've healed whatever ailment it is that you're trying to heal mm-hmm. whereas if you do it for a, a certain amount of time again off top, i can't remember off the top of my head without any herb just the role playing tools you do the same thing but it just takes longer oh right okay yeah, yeah. Uh, okay yeah. so not not all of it like mm-hmm. for instance cleave limbs i believe that you have to use use, yeah. use the herb but there are other things that you can do without herbs oh yeah d- d- yeah definitely kelly definitely post that post that again see if you can find it and post it again yeah I'll, I'll find it and, yeah. and repost it but um so i do that every now and then because there's also i've had where people i've been working on and physicking not realize that i don't have to use the herb and then they think that i haven't fixed where out uh, where ailment it is yeah, okay. and then they go off and they're like roll play they've nearly died because they 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 like oh i'm still bleeding out kind of thing because you didn't use a herb to heal me so i'm still bleeding out and then the next thing they're like oh i was seconds from death until this person healed me and i'm like no i healed you a couple of minutes ago dude yeah, I'm, yeah I, I am i am not i am I, I have not got that meta of a head like honestly if, I, if i'm going down and, and the healer is like you're healed i'm like great <laughs> <laughs> I, do not, I do not question it for a second also i don't understand a lot of the what what actually needs to be done because i don't i don't really inter- i've not interacted with that part of the game at all like i don't really know how the herb i know you take a potion and role play taking a potion that is it that's all i know so i just like if a physic comes and heal or a healer just comes up and heals me i will just just i'll just go along with the role play i have no idea mm. mechanically what it's doing but if they say yeah, there mean... we go legs better i'm just like cool the leg is the leg yeah. is better well, there you know, if someone, if a physics taking longer to do something on you, it means they're doing it without a herb. All right, they're okay. saving their resources. Ah, uh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like, so... I mean, like I've been like stitched up on the battlefield before. Mm. I had like lots of long role play where that's been happening. So I'm assuming that's kind of what happened there. Then it was just that sort of. Yeah. Thing like, going I don't want to yeah. waste my resources in this Dornish yeah. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Healed her once already. <laughs> or that one keeps running into bramble bushes and getting cleaved. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I find as a physic, our resources, I feel like they're the only, and to a certain extent, the uh, manner, um, but not so much, but physics for sure. We use our resources healing people and it's the only time in the game where everyone's just like, okay, thanks, and they wander off. And they're like, I've just, everyone just takes it for granted yeah. that you're going to use your herbs to heal them, which is basically rubbing money into their legs. Yeah, it is. Whereas yeah. if you want a... a someone to make a sword for you and they're like that's however much um uh whatever metal it is yeah, and they're yeah. like you need to provide the metal or if i'm going to use my own metal you need to pay me for it that's a good point yeah yeah but physics we're not like i'm going to heal you i'm using this herb can you give me the money for it yeah. if you said that to someone who's on the floor they'd be like wait what wait what i don't know wait what <laughs> We're not in America. I know that. Yeah, the the, the league ish healers might be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, how much have you got? Yeah, <laughs> I but I, I do very very occasionally have people come back who know me and they recognise my kit. So they might not know I'm Iron Tide Flash, but they recognise I'm an Iron Tide. So they come in saying there was an Iron Tide that healed me, and I'm the only healer. So they know it's so they know the rest of the Iron Tide know to get me, and they're like, I want to come and say thank you here's some herbs as a, as a yeah. thank you yeah but that people very 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 rarely think to do that yeah yeah and well, so well we're I'm, funding the, yeah it's also <laughs> role play as well like cause that, that's what we did in our so um yeah you someone who we're we're uh, cl- close with in kind of role play in the system now that their game was literally giving out potions to new players you know, and, you know, it was good. The potion, like, saved my life at E1. But then that yeah. gave me a little bit of game, like, the next game. Because I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go sell this stuff that I have. My military unit got me. I'm going to sell that, get some herbs. I have no use for the herbs. I'm going to give them back to that person that mm. was giving out the potions, you know. And just that's just a cool little bit of game that you can yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they might not necessarily need the herbs. Like, I don't. I don't yeah. need the herbs. I've got so many because I'm a trader. 
But it's just nice when people think about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I got you this, and again, it's it's a role playing game. It's game. Yeah. So. Because there are people out there like that, that aren't as flush with herbs as as we are in the um in the Iron Tide. So for them, every little herb that they use is like taking a chunk of their resources. Yeah. So for them yeah. to get given some back, so. I do like to try and foster that mentality for some people to at least say, do you want me to give you the herbs back? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, um, have you got any player events or anything like that before E1 or because you play, because you play, is it Curious Pastimes you play as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah I play or, a goblin at CP. Yeah. Or do you just like wait until like LARP season and then just go to all the big ones? I do, I do normally do quite a lot of events, like player events, mm -hmm. whether it be Empire CP or smaller ones. Yeah. I also run my own LARP, but um, so but I'm I'm not this year. I'm, okay, you're not. You're, after, <laughs> you're like no. Nope. After E four to E one, I'm 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 taking a break. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just going to enjoy the downtime because it's been. Oh, this was the first year back at Empire this year, mm -hmm. and and getting back into the swing of things, it's been quite full on. I have a, a lot of commissions on masks because I do um, hair on the masks. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah, nice. and it's and it's a it takes a lot of hours to do that and a lot of effort. I so bet. I've yeah. I've had um, at least one commission between each event, and I've got another two commissions to do for E one. Yeah. So um, and I want to make it that I do that, and that's my only bit. I want to take a break from LARP for a little bit because yeah. I also need to start concentrating on the one I run. Uh -huh. We're not doing an event this year. The, the next no. event we're running is in November next year. Okay, so okay. what type of what type of event is that? Uh, it's called Wayward Road. It's based on Supernatural. Okay, right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> have you, so obviously you, I mean, imagine uh, like COVID must have uh, screwed it all up, right? Um, yeah. But how long did you run that kind of previously? Before COVID. We had two events before COVID mm. happened. Um, so there's a team of us that run it. There's um, four of us that are doing it now because over COVID, other people um, there were more in the team, but they've had other commitments that happened over COVID, so they've like they pulled yeah. out of it, you know. And, uh, um, and and it's great because some of them have gone into some really good things, and and they're running their or helping to run other LARPs as well. Um, but so we there's four of us now that have got to get. It we only do one event a year. In, yeah. in november normally yes yeah. because we're a small team and we don't yeah. make no profit from it whatsoever yeah huh. literally all the money from the tickets goes into the site and the kit and the yeah. food and stuff like that so um but so we did two events and i have i had run um experience running larks before that as well so i mentioned lt i actually used yeah. to um work at lt as before all right okay uh -huh. years, oh, and wow. years and years and years and years and years and years ago uh -huh. so i used to work in the um plot team for lt like uh, right, not actually yeah. writing the plot mm -hmm. but sending the plot out in yeah. the um, in the in the tent like getting all the monsters ready and briefing yeah. them and sending them out oh that's really cool <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, so you I, have experience of how how mechanically a LARP game should yeah, kind of run. Yeah, basically. so yeah. that's what I do with Wayward Road. I'm responsible for, they call me the monster mum. I'm responsible nice. for the monster room yes. <laughs> and um, and getting all the encounters done. So the players never see me. Yeah. So like, with the four other people that run it, so, um, they, they, they see the other people, but I'm like this unknown person that they don't even know exists. So when we come out at the end of the event and everyone, and we're all talking, like the players, you can see they're like, who the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you're hoping, to, yeah. so you're hoping to run that like next next year? November you next year, November yeah. November next year. Well, we'll have to, um, if you want to come back on again, we'll have to come back on and we'll you can talk about that and big that up. Yeah, um, for sure. I've, I've got others in the pipeline as well that um, I'm... So with my friend Stacy that I mentioned earlier, who was um poor and tied wear sick. Yeah, well, you, yeah. If you come back on with like when you when you're ready to release them and uh, you wanna you wanna froth about them and you wanna big them up, um, yeah. we'd, we'd be more than happy to have you oh, back brilliant. on to <laughs> chat about it. It's been great, Kelly, speaking with you, learning more more about the Imperial Oaks. I can't wait till E1 and, well, next year in in general to come around and um, I'll have to find you. It's it, Because I say this to everyone, I'm like, I have to come find you in role play, but it's, I'm good, it might take me a little while with, yeah. with the Imperial Oak characters because some of them are just like, I'll find you in role play uh, when they don't have no, their mask on and then I have no <laughs> idea who they are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or I might have a conversation with them and then another conversation and Robin's like, oh, that that's such and such in the Yeah, Imperial you don't even know he's like, oh, talking to Oh, all right. <laughs> I wondered what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Right, should we say goodbye to the podcast, everyone? Yeah, bye. 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 
if you enjoyed this show, make sure that you follow and subscribe so, you know, you know when a new episode is posted. Um, you can leave a review, you can share it around, it would really help us out and you know we appreciate you doing that. And remember, you can catch us live on twitch.tv forward slash to have underscore to roll. That's the number two and, and roll is into roleplay. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. 